let's move on to the third part. So life at LSE. So um, what extracurriculars do you participate in LSE? Like what are uh, any major achievements during your time at LSE? Okay, um, the main society, so there's two kinds of extracurriculars, I guess you could call them. The first are societies, um, which includes sports teams and stuff as well, and academic societies, and the second is volunteering. So I definitely was more involved in societies in my first year, but that's just because of COVID and people were allowed to meet and do events and stuff in first year. Um, but I've been quite involved with the law society. I gained a position on the subcommittee in my first year as a junior mooting officer. In my second year, which is this year, I was careers officer and I was recently elected to be president of the law society in my final year at uni. Um, aside from that, in my first year, I was part of some social societies as well. There's one called Abacus, which stands for Association of British and Chinese University Students. And it's a society that's run between all the um, intercollegiate University of London universities. So it includes like Queen Mary, King's, UCL, and they're really great um, to feel like a sense of community, you know, um, whilst at LSE, um, like a sense of community with students from other universities, I mean. Right. And um, that in my first year I did, the other societies I was in were Amnesty International and United Nations. So do you, act, do you think that LSE has like more extracurriculars, I guess, like they, like besides uh, academics, they also focus a lot of their energy and time on extracurriculars. Like, I definitely think yeah. so. Although that's not necessarily, I wouldn't say that they're run by LSE. Um, the societies are actually run by the student union, which is independent from the university itself. Um, but the university does host a lot of like public lectures and talks. They invite a lot of really well-known speakers to come in and talk. They organize volunteering events as well. So there is a lot to do. Great. So then, um, cause we know that studying law is a really stressful thing and you have to spend all three years like on like on law and then, uh, so how stressful do you think uh, studying law at LSE is? How do you how 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 do you normally balance uh, work and life? Stressful, um, it is stressful. Don't get me wrong, but I think yeah. stress is definitely like subjective. You know what I mean? Yeah. It all depends on how 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 much time you need to personally put in to achieve what you want to achieve. So, sorry, just to explain that a bit better. I guess everyone's goals are different. And the amount of time that you need to spend studying or doing work to achieve those goals will therefore also be different. Um, for me in my first year, I definitely put more of a focus on participating in society events, um, making new friends at university, um, exploring London, that kind of thing. Not, not just because your first year grades don't count towards your final degree, but also because I feel like that's a really important part of enjoying university, you know? You yeah. can be working 24 seven and do really well in your exams, but I don't know if you'll have as many good memories when you look back on your time at university. So I think it's definitely worth putting some emphasis on self-care, putting some emphasis on taking time for yourself outside of your studies to minimize um, how stressful the degree can get if that makes sense yeah yeah I, I think that's really good I, I think uh yeah university is not just about study yeah you're really right up on that and so so how because you said that um your first year you you were focused on like not focused but you spent more some energy on networking making friends so uh, how do you normally, like during your first year, apart from attending societies, what are other ways or alternatives that you would make friends with uh, students from all other colleges? And uh, can you give us any tips on that or advice? Yeah, um, I was pretty lucky because the dorms that I was staying at were intercollegiate dorms 
which meant that they didn't just have LSE students, but they also had students from UCL, Kings, SOAS, Queen Mary. So for me, it was pretty natural to befriend people from other universities. And I had more of an opportunity, I guess, to meet and socialize with them. Other than that, if you stay in an LSE only dorm, for example, um, as I said before, there are some intercollegiate societies like Abacus, um, sports events, you know, like sports teams from different universities play against each other. Um, I think if you're if you're more interested in like music and drama, I think the universities do like joint concerts and stuff outside of COVID times. To be honest, because half of my uni experience has been during COVID, I haven't had a lot of firsthand experience when it comes to those kinds of in-person events, but I do know that they have happened in the past. So I'm sure when COVID um, kind of passes, that they'll come back and you'll have more opportunities to meet students from other universities than we do now. Got it, great. So then for the dorms, about how many people share one dorm? Um, so there's two kinds of dorms. The ones that I stayed at are like uh, corridor based, if that makes sense. Yeah. They look more like American dorms, where wow. it's just like a really long corridor and then like yeah. loads of rooms along them. But what's more common are dorms with flats, which means you know, you take the elevator to your floor, you scan your key card and you open the door and it's like a very short corridor with about like five bedrooms and a shared kitchen. And, um, you know, like people usually, it's easier to befriend your flatmates just because you're sharing the same kitchen, you're talking to each other all the time, but it's also harder to meet other people who live in the same um, building, I guess, as you, because you can't access other people's flats. Okay. So right. cool. when it comes to like picking your accommodation and stuff like that, maybe that's something that you would want to take into account. Okay. So did you have any difficulty at the very start, like the first week of school to find friends or, or like just feel a bit lonely? Like, do you have that any, any of those problems? Sure. I mean, I, I was definitely... I definitely got homesick. Um, I think that's a universal experience that a lot of university students can ex uh, can relate to. Um, in terms of being, in terms of making friends, I think, um, well, the hall, the dorm that I was at organized these like speed dating kind of things where people would meet each other for the first time and talk to other people in the halls. Um, they're also like, they're also common rooms in all the dorms where generally, um, especially during freshers week or like the first couple weeks of term, everyone will be there in the evenings after their classes to just socialize and make new friends. Um, LSE sometimes has a pretty bad rep for, I guess, like social life and student satisfaction from my but from my personal experience I think your social life is a hundred percent what you make of it you know I guess yeah. you're always gonna be in your room and isolating yourself you're and then you complain about you know like people being yeah. antisocial I feel like you need to step out of your own shell and meet others um who are you know all go to your university and are also looking to meet you yeah, true. So yeah. then uh, you, you also talked, so previously you talked about your, you, you, your, uh, you picked commercial contract be because you're interested in getting into that area. So in terms of your future career, are you planning to get into uh, like commercial, uh, those, uh, those, these areas? Is that your yeah, future? Yeah, that's right. So um um there's two if you want to go into a career in law there's like two kind of main tracks right the first is a solicitor the second is a barrister yeah and um I think the commercial solicitor track is the one for me so this summer I'm doing um a couple internships at commercial law firms they're called vacation schemes and hopefully I'll be able to convert them into a training contract which is a graduate job that you go straight into after graduating from uni. 
So you go straight to work as a trainee for the law firm. Um, if you want to become a barrister, it's a different process. You do, instead of vacation schemes, you would do mini pupillages and then um, a pupillage and hope to be recruited by a chambers. But yeah, it's two very different processes. Okay, so you're, cur you're currently in London, right? Yeah. So, so how competitive do you think becoming a solicitor is like in mm -hmm. London, like this really populated area? Like, it's think super, it's, super competitive. Yeah. It's really competitive. Um, as I said, you can, to become a commercial solicitor, you want to first go into a training contract with a commercial law firm. You can apply for those directly, but the acceptance rates are so low. I'm not going to give you a number because I'm not too sure, but I think yeah. it's lower. It's definitely lower than like university recruitment rates, um, especially for the top firms. Yeah. So you're better off doing a vacation scheme whilst you're in uni. So in the summer of your second or third year and hopefully converting those into a, into a training contract at the end of the scheme. There are also a bunch of first year schemes. Um, in my first year, I spent a lot of time going to career events at law firms. Um, and you can apply for first year insight schemes. You know, sometimes there'll be like an open day with the law firm where they explain the firm's um, work and their values and you can decide whether you want to apply. And other times there'll be week long schemes where you'll be tasked with things to do for the firm. Um, and those will put you in really good stead for vacation scheme and training contract applications come second and third year. Okay. So do you foresee that the path for solicitor and, or barristers are going to be narrower as time goes by? Like it's going to be more, even more competitive than right now? I think um, the job market has gone kind of haywire since COVID. And there've been a lot more applicants this year and last year than there were before. So in that sense, yes, it, it is a lot more competitive. And also there's been a lot more legal technology that's being rolled out recently, which um, it's unfortunate, I guess. I mean, it's good for the legal industry, but in terms of the number of roles and the number of trainees that they'll take in every year, I feel like the intakes will reduce. So do you have any um last general tips that you would give to prospective students who wants to apply to LC? Um, <laughs> For instance, um, uh, nice. like some of some of lessons you've learned at LSC, maybe like whether it's uh, socialing with others or like learning or like applying just in gen general. For sure. Um, LSE, I think this is the um, main thing that I realized, but okay, well, well first of all, the um, one thing that I want to say is LSE and similar to most of the other uh, major London universities, LSE is not a campus university, unlike um, like Warwick or Exeter, for example. So there's going to be less of a community feel, if that makes sense. When yeah. you go to a campus university, all of the students and all the professors are kind of all hoarded in the same place at once, yeah. whereas LSC doesn't even have a campus itself. It just has various academic buildings scattered around central London. Yeah. So in that sense, it's less of a community feel than those other universities. And that's something to be, to, I guess, keep in mind and be prepared for. Um, but Having said that, as I said earlier, your social life is 100% what you make of it. So if you are someone who loves a really big friend group, or um, if you're someone who really, who, who that community feel is very important to, then it's of course still achievable. It's just up to you to go out and find those like-minded people that you want to form a community with. And that's something I wish I'd known coming in. Um, but I'm glad I quickly discovered because I was able to join lots of different societies with things that I was interested in um, and meet people who were interested in the same things as I am. So I was able to form my own little community that way, if that makes sense. Yeah, great. That's really good to hear that. And 
So thank you so much for um, spending this time to share your experience at LSE. So I'm sure that we all have learned a lot from your our interview. So what, just one last question. Uh, how can we contact you if we have any, um, any more questions to ask about LSE? Sure. Um, my LSE email is j.w.ma at lse.ac.uk. Great. Thank you so and, much. Oh, yeah. no, no worries. I was just going to say, other and than that. How about your Insta? Instagram? My Instagram is j.essma. Yeah. Great. Then thank you so much, Jessica. Hope to see you next time. If no worries at all. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone may have about LSE.